This is a problem that is so multifaceted and so important and so hopeful because there's so much now that we have learned. And through that, we have been able to develop remarkable um, improvements in intervention and uh, the ability. I believe this is one of the reasons for studying this particular problem. This is a problem that we will be able to solve, that we are solving. And that's very, very hopeful. And so I see this as not only important to understanding how the brain works at the very highest levels, but also as something that we can, uh, as scientists, provide back into really getting a handle on improving um, the outlook for individuals who uh, have these problems. And from our baby research, my ultimate goal, I think our, all of our ultimate goal, if we could really understand this early, then knowing what we now know about brain plasticity, about the use of uh, computer technologies for training programs or whatever, there's every reason to believe that we can nip this in the bud before the child ever has to experience the loss of self-esteem through difficulty in, uh, in school. And that would be, wow, <laughs> you know, what else would you want? That would be very exciting. Well, that's certainly part of what's motivating us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we understand that, that at the same time, perhaps more important than the child's uh, learning to read for its academic sense, mm -hmm. for the academic value in that, and for its future economic potential, mm -hmm. and so forth and so on, is that this learning to read environment is a learning environment in which they're learning about themselves, who, about, themselves mm -hmm. about how their mind functions and how they feel about how their mind functions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And before the imagery of self-esteem forms as a, a self-concept feeding back to them, mm -hmm. there's the affect of shame starting to mix into the cognitive process. And mm -hmm. I wanted to speak to that when you talk about emotions. There's the kind of micro quantum side of the emotional spectrum in the in the uh, affective mechanics that are uh, concurring with the cognitive processes. Mm -hmm. And then there's this downstream self-talk story piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have, has your work um, gotten into the uh, affect psychology side? I have uh, in the past done clinical therapy with families with children with language learning problems as well as other problems, but uh, just that whole issue of, uh, um, you know, see, beginning to see the child as the problem, you know, the reading problem, rather than see the child as the person, and how our society perpetrates that over time, and uh, what you can do about that piece of it. The neuroscience of emotion is just beginning to come together with uh, an understanding of the interplay between the emotions and the cognitive side of, uh, um, and th probably will probably tie together in the end through reinforcement systems but, and through learning systems in the brain. Are you familiar with Sylvan Tompkins' work? No. Affect imagery consciousness, the, the relationship between affect uh, that broke down a series of uh, kind of like the precursors of, of emotion. Mm and their relationship to cognition, mm -hmm. how both are involved in everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> well, uh, parenthetically, I'll send you some stuff on that that you might like. But I I'm really interested in uh, getting at how children develop their kind of emotional self-assumptions mm -hmm. in the field of learning to read. I, mean, learning I, don't to read on, I don't know if I'm the best person to kind of focus on that because I haven't done that much research there. Um, I know that my colleague um, Mike Mersnick doing the work with, um, they're doing some work with rats now on uh, neuroplasticity and learning. I mean, he's the one who developed the whole, the reason the company's called Scientific Learning Corporation is that Mike, um, Mike's work developed a whole series of scientific learning principles <clears throat> based on heavy and learning and the work that he's done primarily with animals. Um, and um, about what, what does it take to, you know, remap the brain? So he's Mr. Neuroplasticity, you know. And uh, um, what it takes to remap the brain um, is a series of principles that have to do with, uh, first of all, having something to pay attention to, um, and then having something you can do at a high level of accuracy so you can get a proper amount of reinforcement and reward. Um, having the intensity for repetitive stimuli to come in so that neurons that fire together can wire together on a very repetitive basis. Um, and um, having appropriate um, feedback and reward. Um, and having and learning has to be individualized. It has to be according to what it is worth figuring out where your brain is at and what's the next step. It is a sort of a stepwise process. 
and um, <clears throat> some of the work that has been done with the nucleus basalis stimulation, that if you can do these scientific learning principles at the same time as stimulating the reward, some of the reward systems in the brain, then of course you're going to have even much more rapid learning. So uh, I think that uh, learning, of course, is one of the most elegant areas to study in neuroscience because it does have, it's one of the few areas that has the potential to go really from the cellular neurological level all the way up to the human condition, as it were. And uh, we haven't completely been able to do that in terms of bridging the gaps. And there's some, in, some bridges that may be too big to jump in our lifetime, but I think that the area of learning and particularly through the focus on neuroplasticity, which is how do you change the learning in the brain um, over time? Then, uh, and what are the differences between the critical periods in which certain types of learning just seem to occur um, mo more um, overtly, and what has to be done later if you're going to try to, uh, um, you know, kind of intervene in, in a process which doesn't seem to be as adaptive. So there may be different uh, approaches that have to be taken to uh, uh, to get into the neurobiological part of the system in terms of remapping and rewiring and whatever. And of course, you need technology probably for that as much as anything. <clears throat> Let me uh, ask you some questions. And, and this, the point of these will be to get some short things yeah, that we're going to okay. uh, spread around through the series. Um, what is reading? Let's just take that and give me a couple of sentences. Your crispus definition. What is reading? What is reading? Um, Reading is a code um, that, when broken, allows you to uh, um, convey information in the form of a visual print in terms of uh, what it would have sounded like if someone had spoken sorry, it to you. Sorry, 